In 2021, there was an A-level physics question in which only around 10% of the students managed to score two out of two. The question was deceptively simple, but it had a little trick. We have a wire with current that is going into the board. In other words, the current is in this direction. What we need to do is simply draw the magnetic field pattern around this wire. Okay, that's not so bad. All we need to do is use the right hand rule. So we take our right hand, our thumb points into the direction of the current and our fingers are going to curl in the direction of the field. Let's freeze time here. I will first show you what not to do. So this means that I'm going to have concentric circles around it like this and the direction will be in this way. Hmm. This is actually wrong and will not score two out of two. The magnetic field gets weaker and weaker around the wire, so our magnetic field lines should indicate this. This means the spacing between individual field lines has to be shown to be greater. So something such as this, where the distance between the individual field lines keeps on increasing, will score two out of two. The next part of this question is equally interesting and valuable to learn from. We have results from an absolute classic experiment on magnetic field and we're given all of this valuable data. What we need to do is use this to determine the magnetic flux density B and the absolute uncertainty in that value. We can start off by using the good old F is equal to Bill equation. The magnetic force in this case will be equal to the difference in the mass scale balance readings multiplied by g and we can then rearrange this equation for the flux density b plug in some values and get the right answer because though we have multiplied and divided quantities what we need to figure out is the percentage uncertainty of the system there's only two values that we need to consider and we can find the percentage uncertainty as the absolute uncertainty divided by the value, multiply by 100 and add them together. This will give us a percent, but this is not our absolute uncertainty. Absolutely so. Sorry, I'll, I'll see myself out. Our final step would be to take that percentage from our value of the flux density and round this up to one significant figure as this was the uncertainty in all of the absolute uncertainty values, giving us the correct answer. If you would like some extra practice with these uncertainty problems, by the way, I've created a worksheet with 50 problems that will make you a master of uncertainties. I'll link that in the description. Talking about uncertainties though, we've only looked at one aspect and to ensure that you give yourself the best possible chance for the exams, you need to have a look at this video right over here.